Hey, welcome back, podcast friends, to another episode. And today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the three approaches to losing weight and reversing type 2 diabetes. There's three different ways that, that have been tried. And just, just a little um, um, <laughs> word of warning, one of these ways never, ever works. One of these ways, one of these uh, works probably about 5% of the time. And the third way works 100% of the time if you can change your habits. And that's what we're going to be kind of talking about. So in the last episode, um, I was actually talking about insulin resistance. What causes insulin resistance? Because remember, type 2 diabetes is not a disease of high blood glucose. Okay. That's what the drug companies and food companies want you to believe, or mainly the drug companies. Type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. Okay. So you're it is caused from eating too much glucose. So when you eat tons of glucose all the time, you keep your insulin levels high. When you keep your insulin levels high, that's why it ends up causing insulin resistance because your body can't store all that fat from all those carbohydrates that you're eating. So you stuff your fat cells so full, the insulin doesn't start, doesn't work on it anymore. And that's when you start storing the fat all around your organs and start getting all the organ damage. And that's how I ended the last podcast was all the different types of organ damage, which is significant. And most every single organ in your body gets damaged by having high insulin levels and high blood glucose levels and inflammation. Those three things are what's killing us. And all of it can be very, very simply taken care of if you do it the right way. So that's what we're going to talk about. So the first way, what we're going to talk about is um, there are three different models. There's the calorie model, which says eat less calories and exercise more. And I've already done podcasts on how absolutely ridiculous that information is. Then there's also the medical system model, which thinks that everything is a, a chemical um, deficiency. And so they have to give a drug. OK, so you, you'll have to decide which one of these never, ever works. And which one of these works maybe 5% of the time. And then the third one is going to be the insulin model, which means eating healthy. So first, let's look at the calorie model, the one where they're, by, they're telling you to eat less calories and exercise more. So what they're saying is keep eating the same type of food that got you sick in the first place. Just don't eat that much of it. And this is a horrible way to do it. And the people who suffer from type 2 diabetes, they are driven by hunger. When they start doing this and they start trying to decrease their calories, that's all they can think about is food all the time because they're still eating the same kind of food that actually makes them get hungry. And I've talked about that in the past. When you eat that type of food, God has made a way that when we eat the right food, it keeps us feeling full for very long periods of time. You could go days and weeks without eating if you're eating the right type of food. However, if you're eating the man-made high carbohydrate, basically it's all carbohydrate food. When you eat that, that there's several different ways that, that actually blocks your natural way of feeling full. So by blocking your natural way of feeling full, it actually makes you hungrier. And there's all kinds of reasons why that type of food makes you hungry. And I've talked about that in a past podcast. But basically, when these type 2 diabetics, when they're hungry, which they are, always are because they're still eating the same kind of food and now they're trying to decrease the amount of calories they're taking in so they're even more ravenous and usually when they're hungry they're always hungry for that same type of food it's the stuff that's sweet salty and greasy that's the kind of food that man makes because they know that that's extremely addictive and i've talked about the addictive model that that they've done and i talked about in my episode 66 and episode 67, it's actually a two-part episode on how they went to great lengths to get us actually addicted to their food. The exact same way that the same people got everybody addicted to, to cigarettes. Now they moved over to the food and they tried getting everybody addicted to, to food and it actually worked. And that's why we're having all these uh, health or these health diseases that we have right now. So this is not your fault. It, it really, and I almost hate saying that, but it really isn't your fault. The food that you are eating that's making you sick is chemically made to make you sick. 
along with all the other things that they do, like advertise everywhere and start people off when they're really young and make it very available. They put it everywhere. They put addictive substances in it and they also make it very affordable. Of course, it's affordable because there's no nutrients in man-made food at all. All you're getting is, is carbohydrates, sugar and high fructose corn syrup and vegetable and seed oils. That's all you're getting. There are no nutrients, which is why your body is hungry all the time. That's one of the reasons why your body is all hungry all the time because it's not getting the nutrients it needs. And that's why God made us have hunger so we can get the nutrients in our body so our bodies can work the way it's supposed to. But when you're doing the, the eat less calories and, and um, exercise more approach, you're defeating all that. You are still remaining very, very hungry through this whole thing. Now, when you do this, what happens, and if you remember in my past episodes, when you have high insulin levels, it forces your body to store fat. You cannot burn your own fat when your insulin levels are high. It is, it is biochemically impossible. When your insulin levels drop down low, that forces you to burn your own fat for your energy source out of your subcutaneous cells and out of away from your organs. If you already have fatty liver disease, which chances are you do because most of us do anymore because of the same reason, the same food that we're eating. When you eat this kind of food, you get fat in your fat cells, you get fat around your organs. When you lower your, your insulin levels, you're, that's going to cause your body to start eating your fat for its energy source, which is the way God made us from the beginning. And it will start taking away the fat from your organs first. So if you haven't gone too far in your organ damage, you really can reverse a lot of this stuff, including fatty liver disease. Okay. Because you're going to start using that for energy. And the drug companies and food companies will not tell you this because they make their money on keeping you sick. So um, your liver needs insulin. Okay. It's store. I mean, it, your liver stores fat, your subcutaneous fat cells store fat, your muscles store fat. So when your insulin levels are high and you're telling your body store fat, that's where you're telling it to store it in your subcutaneous fat cells, in your muscles, in your liver, then your pancreas, then your heart, then kidneys. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. One place that doesn't store fat is your brain. Your brain doesn't store any kind of energy, so it doesn't store fat, and it also doesn't store glucose. So your body, the, your brain, the only energy it knows is what it's getting through the bloodstream. But remember, if your insulin levels are high, you cannot burn your fat. You have to have insulin in order to burn your fat. So when you keep your insulin levels high, like in type 2 diabetes, that means your brain cannot use fat for its energy source like it wants. However, if you're doing the low calorie where you eat the same stuff, so you're keeping your insulin levels high, but you're eating less calories, all your brain knows is I can't burn fat because I have high insulin and I'm getting way less calories coming in because you have decreased the amount that you're eating. So this makes your brain very hungry and it will, your brain will make your body very hungry. And this is why type two, this is one of the reasons why type two diabetics are hungry all the time because the brain is looking for nutrients and you're not giving it to them. It needs the fat. It needs fat because fat will keep your insulin levels low. Fat doesn't affect your insulin levels at all. Fat will keep your insulin levels low, which means you can burn it. And when you start burning your fat for the ketones, that's what your brain loves. And that's what actually every cell in your body loves. It loves to burn ketones for its energy source. And it can only do that when your insulin levels are low. So um, the other thing is the ne or the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the um, the biggest loser. This is what they found out when the, the show that came out called The Biggest Loser. When this show came out, that's exactly what they did. They were telling everybody, this is what you have to do. You have to decrease your calories. And in that, they decrease them severely. And you have to exercise more. And in that show, they exercise very much more. And actually, even though it was called The Biggest Loser, that show actually was The Biggest Loser. It was the worst advice that they could possibly give people. These people were horribly starving all the time. And every one of those contestants, they gained all of their fat back plus more for this exact reason that we were talking about. Now, in some of my past podcasts, um, if you look at uh, episode number four, Episode number four, it says, it is not about eat less calories and exercise more. And in that, I explain about your body weight set point. 
But basically, you, you can you can hear the details aren't there. But basically, what it's saying is your body, even though you may not be at a healthy weight, you're at the weight that your body feels comfortable. You feel comfortable with your body at this weight. And so what happens is if you start to decrease your weight, if you start to lose weight, your body doesn't want you to lose weight. It wants you to get back up. So what it does is it slows down your metabolism so it can get your weight back up. And it also makes you ravenously hungry so you can get your weight back up. So anytime you're trying to lose weight, you're going to slow your metabolism and you're going to be ravenously hungry. So that's how you have to defeat that is by eating the type of stuff that um, keeps you satiated naturally. The stuff that actually stays in your intestines, stays in your stomach for long periods of time. It keeps stimulating all your satiety hormones all through your body. So it keeps you where you're not hungry. Okay. That's what you're wanting to do. Now, the opposite is also true. If you're at, if you're at your normal, the body weight that you are comfortable with, and that's your body weight set point, if you try to gain weight from there, your body's going to do the exact opposite. It's going to, it's going to make it where you aren't very hungry because it wants you to get your weight back down and it's going to speed up your metabolism so you can get your weight back down. Okay. So what I said was if you're trying to lose weight, your body is going to make you ravenously hungry and slow your metabolism. If you try to gain weight, your body's going to do the opposite. It's going to make you not very hungry and it's going to speed up your metabolism. Now, the reason I say that is because a really strange thing that they found with these uh, with these, these contestants on The Biggest Loser is they all lost the weight a little bit, but they all gained it back. But what happened when they started gaining it back is, remember, normally your metabolism is going to be slowed down. And as you gain weight, it speeds up. As these biggest losers, as they started gaining their weight back, their metabolism didn't speed up. Their metabolism stayed low. So now they're ravenously hungry and, and also their metabolism is slow. And so they gained their weight back and they even gained more back on top of that. So that's, that's one of the things that's wrong with the calorie model. It is not about calories. The glucose, which is the the basic building block of all carbohydrates. All carbohydrates means plant-based food. Anything that did not come from an animal is a plant-based food, which means it has the basic building block of glucose. So anytime you have a model that says you can eat all, just, just decrease the amount of glucose you have, it makes no sense because glucose period is raising your insulin levels. So that's why that makes no sense whatsoever. So now, but that that is why, you know, some people, can lose weight that way. Only about 5% can lose weight that way. And those are the ones who have real grit. I mean, they have to, they have to really, really, they have to struggle through all the starvation they're going through where they're ravenously hungry. And, uh, and the only ones who do this, who have a really big reason like movie stars or, um, um, or weightlifters. These are the ones that, that through just sheer grit, because they've got a movie coming up or a competition coming up, they can suffer through all this, this starvation, but most people can't. They're going to give in and they're going to start eating more. So now that takes us to the second model, which is the medical system model, taking a drug. This is the model that never, ever, ever works. When you think that you're going to take a medication to stop your diabetes, you are thinking totally wrong because every single medication for diabetes works one of two ways. It's either going to stimulate your pancreas to produce more insulin. And remember the problem with type two diabetes is having too much insulin to begin with. That's why you get insulin resistance. So stimulating your insulin makes no sense whatsoever. Okay. So you don't do it by stimulating insulin. And the other way is they make it, uh, make it where you're more insulin sensitive. All that does is makes to where all the carbohydrates that you're eating that's getting turned into fat can be stored in the fat cells when they normally wouldn't want to be. So all these people actually end up becoming worse and worse. You're going to be putting on higher and higher doses and more and more meds. It's called polypharmy, polypharma. It means you're just putting on drug after drug after drug because all of them are actually making it worse. And this is what's killing everybody. So, um, and I know it's hard to change habits. I know it is. But if you really care about your health, that's what you're going to have to do. Because that's what a lot of people do. They don't want to change their health. They don't want to change the type of food they eat. And they think, oh, all I have to do is take a drug. All I have to do is inject myself once a week and I'm going to lose weight. That's what they think at first because they think it's easy. 
the people you guys, you do not realize all the multiple adverse effects that they are to medications. 100% of the medications, 100% have multiple adverse effects. Some of them may only have 10 or 20 adverse effects. An adverse effect means you're taking a tablet to cure one thing, but come to find out it's messing up a lot of other things in your body. So some of them have around 10 to 20. Most of them have around 30 or 40. And then when you're talking about things like these, these GLP-1 agonists, these semaglutides and all those, those have well over 60 different adverse effects and they are getting worse and worse all the time. And historically, weight loss meds have always been taken off the med, off the uh, market because of all the serious adverse effects, including death. So they've tried all kinds of things on how to lose weight by giving you a drug and all of them ended up being so bad adverse effects that they had to actually take them off the market. The reason why is because these GLP-1 agonists, okay? GLP-1 is an actual hormone that your body naturally secretes. Your intestines secrete that. And they do it right after a meal for a reason. It does want to keep, especially when you're eating a high carb meal, the GLP-1, it wants to keep that carbohydrate in your stomach as long as possible because it doesn't want high glucose levels. So that's why it gets stimulated after a meal, okay? But remember, GLP-1, not only does it keep food in your stomach, but it also causes you to increase your insulin levels. Again, that goes against what you're trying to do if you have a type 2 diabetes. You're trying to decrease, actually, everybody needs to keep their insulin levels low. I mean, that's, that's the way our body functions best is when the insulin levels are low. So our intestines will secrete this GLP-1 after a meal. But after the food comes out of our stomach, because it doesn't paralyze it forever, like the GLP-1 agonists, the drugs do, and they keep it, they keep it paralyzed forever. And then we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But the GLP that your body naturally secretes, it secretes it, but it only lasts after a meal. So then after the meal comes and your glucose goes down, it brings your insulin back down to, and that's because of another hormone. But then you go on your normal way. But these GLP-1 agonists from the from the drug companies. These hit your GLP way up at super therapeutic levels, way higher than your natural does. And it keeps it high for way longer than your natural does. And this is why we're seeing all the multiple adverse effects that you're seeing with the GLP ones. And I've talked about those in past podcasts, but basically now what it does is they found that with this GLP ones, besides the thyroid cancer that it caused and everything else, it slows the intestines down way, way, way too much to where you actually, there are a lot of people who are actually having permanent paralysis of their intestines and they're having to go in and have a colostomy put in because their intestines don't work anymore. And over in the UK, they actually looked at all the people who've been on these GLP-1 agonists for greater than 24 months. And of all the patients they looked at that had been on for greater than 24 months, over 65% of these patients chose to stop taking, stop taking the drug. They hated it. They said that they were tired of feeling sick all the time. They say the food noise did quiet, but that's because they were nauseated all the time. They were constantly being nauseated. Then they also, because this GLP-1, remember when your body naturally secretes it, it only secretes it for a little while after a meal and then it goes back down. These stay and they keep it up there and they've been, they've been fine. They've going into surgery, telling people to stop eating like, like 12 hours before a surgery. And when they get in there, still food in there of a meal that these people would have eaten like three days ago. That's how long this food stays in there. And so it starts rotting. And when this food is in there for that long, you get what's called ozempic burps. It's this disgusting, foul smelling burps that come out because all this food is rotting in your stomach because, because it's paralyzed your stomach. The other thing they found out is uh, that they don't have joy anymore. They said they just don't have joy. Things that they used to like to do, their, their mood is just flat anymore. And some things they may have been passionate about, like hiding, I mean, hiking or eating or having sex. And all these, they say they just, they don't have the, the urge anymore. They, they, they are totally apathetic. And they think this, whatever this mechanism is, because they also found out that there's a lot of GLP-1 receptors in the brain. Didn't know that until we started having all these excessive amounts of GLP-1. And that's why they're starting to see a lot more reports coming in of suicidal ideations also. So medications is not the way to go. That medication medication route for type 2 diabetes is the worst. That, that's the one that, that will never, ever work and it will make your diabetes worse.
So now that leads us into the third way, which is the insulin model, which means eat the types of food that give your body all the nutrients that it needs. And you can hear this I, I, my, in my podcast number 90 called Why Do We Eat? And I explain all about what the nutrients are that our body needs, why our body makes us hungry. So we eat those nutrients and why our body can get totally satisfied and not make us hungry anymore once we get the nutrients that it needs. And that is the key. That's what I want you guys to realize is eat the nutrients that keep you healthy and keep your insulin levels low. So the pillars, the four pillars of what you want to do to eat, you want to prioritize your protein. Okay. Eat lots of protein. Because as, as you've known in many of my past podcasts, protein, just like the three macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat, protein, when you eat it, when it gets in your intestines, your intestines actually break that down to the basic building block of amino acids. And of the amino acids, there's nine essential amino acids that we need. And essential means our body cannot make them. We have to get it from the food we eat. So we have to eat protein because we have to get those essential amino acids. The second one is don't fear fat. Fat is actually extremely healthy for you. As long as you're eating good animal fat, that's the kind of fat you're talking about. It doesn't make difference whether it's saturated or unsaturated. That's another thing that the food companies are trying and drug companies are trying to tell you. There are good saturated fats and bad saturated fats, good unsaturated fats and bad unsaturated fats. But what you want is you want an animal-based fat because those are the good and those also, because there's two different, when your fat gets broken down to its basic building block, it's called a fatty acids. There's two fatty acids that are essential for your body, which means your body doesn't make them, you have to eat them. That's omega-3 and omega-6. So you have to eat fat. So you have to eat protein, you have to eat fat, okay? Carbohydrates, all carbohydrates, which means plant-based food, which means food that doesn't come from an animal, all carbohydrates get broken down to its basic building block, which is glucose. So anytime you eat a carbohydrate, you're putting more glucose in your blood. If you are having trouble with high blood glucose and high insulin, the last thing you should be doing is putting more glucose in your blood. So these people like the dietitians and the American Diabetic Association and all these people who are lying to you that tell you it doesn't matter. You can eat what carbs you want. You just want to make sure you give yourself enough insulin. They're doing it for money. It's money, money, money. Okay. This is not about your health. That I mean, anybody can understand how that makes no sense whatsoever. And the fact is it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So prioritize your protein. Don't be scared of fat. You need to eat your fat, animal fat, and control your carbs. If you're going to eat carbohydrate, if you want to eat carbohydrate, that's perfectly fine, but eat real carbohydrates, real fruit, real vegetables. The things that are single ingredient, there's no labels. All, all the food label is, is telling you all the chemicals they put in that food. And you shouldn't be having any chemicals in your body. That's what causes inflammation. So that's why that type of food causes high insulin levels, high glucose levels, and the inflammation throughout your body. So it's best just to totally avoid it. And then if you, uh, if when you do eat carbs, if you do eat real fruit and real vegetables, eat the fruit and eat the vegetable. Do not drink these. This means the smoothies are not what's healthy. That is not healthy. You're taking a bunch of carbs that at least when it's in the fruit or the vegetable, you're going to have fiber in there also. And the fiber will help keep it in the intestines a little bit longer. So your glucose levels will go up as high and it takes a little bit longer. So hopefully your insulin won't go up as high. But when you put that in a blender and you shred that down, you're getting rid of all the fiber. So now the one of the, the biggest things that nature gives you to help you not get these high blood glucoses and now you drink a smoothie and it totally ruins it. OK, so eat your fruit, eat your vegetables, do not drink them. OK, and for the fourth thing that you want to do for your fourth pillar is and after you've been doing this and this is something you're going to work up to is you want to fast. You the, again, the whole thing is keeping your insulin levels low. So if you can eat all your meals in a six to eight hour time period and all and, and that and all the rest of the time, you don't eat anything. You just drink, drink plain water or unsweet coffee or unsweet tea. That's all you can have in that other 16, 18 hours. And remember, you're going to be sleeping during that time also. So you want to make your window that you're not eating during the time that you're sleeping. So really, it just a, cut off a few hours before you go to bed, and a few hours after you go to bed and you're set. And if you eat a really, really good meal, if you're eating a, 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 a good protein, a good animal protein, good animal meat, Greek yogurt, eggs, cottage cheese, 
milk, anything like that. If you eat that kind of stuff, it will keep you feeling full for much longer. So, so that's the deal. So if you can, if you can get your body to where you can fast and it's gone and don't, don't do this. Don't try doing this until you can switch over. So you're not eating carbohydrates all the time, because if you eat carbohydrates all the time, like most people do now, that's all they do is all these, you know, box, bottle, bag, can, fast food restaurants, all the takeout, all this stuff. That is what's going to make you extremely, extremely hungry. And like I said, I talked about that in, in these past, past podcasts. So avoid the food that keeps you hungry. Eat the food that keeps you satiated. That's real protein and real fat. And then as you start doing that, now, now your body is able to go longer without eating. And this is when you can try to fast. And that's going to really just, just um, speed up the amount of weight loss that you're going to be in and how quick you can do it. So that's what you want to do. So you want the insulin model. That's the only one that works 100% of the time as long as you can do it. Now, the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, they published a paper about this, eat less calories and exercise more. And it was based on the contestants uh, of The Biggest Loser. And this is the study where they found out that they were very different from other people. When they lost their weight, when they started gaining it back, their metabolism still stayed low. And that is, that's the worst thing you do is when you're ravenously hungry and your, your metabolism is low. So you can't burn off. The, so you're not even burning off the fat that you're eating as you're increasing it. And that is one of the biggest things that we have to worry about. Now, there was also a large meta-analysis by a bio, um, biological computational lab. And they took all the studies that were out there that they could find that had been published on either low-carb or high-carb diets with equal calories. Okay. So you could either go low carb, high fat, same amount of calories as if you go um, high fat, low carb. So what they did is they looked at all these studies and what they found out is that the people who ate the low fat and the high carb, they had a significant decrease in their metabolic rate. So they ate the same amount of calories, but they were eating it as low fat and high carb. And when they did it, their metabolic rate plummeted down okay significantly and then that's that's a statistical significance however in all the studies where you had high fat low carb their metabolism didn't change it, it did not go down okay their metabolism stayed up it went down just a little bit but it wasn't even significant okay and that's with equal calories which is another reason why i say it is not about the calories it's about the food that you eat and uh now now if you look at the studies that are coming out of drug companies those are the companies they do their studies on for like two week period, three week period. So those studies mean absolutely nothing at all. You cannot, you cannot get anything out of a study on nutrition that you only do for a couple of weeks. That's ridiculous. So now you have the low fat, high carb group. They're starving all the time and their metabolic rate is way, way slower than it used to be. Okay. To where you have the high fat, low carb groups. These are the ones that have taught their bodies to use their own body fat for their energy source. This means it's also feeding the brain. So as far as the brain goes, they're like, hey, I'm perfectly fine here. I've got all the nutrients that I need. And so it keeps you where you're not hungry anymore. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. You need to keep your insulin level low. And the way you keep your insulin levels low is you quit putting glucose in your blood. The way you quit putting glucose in your blood is to quit putting glucose in your mouth. The way you quit putting glucose in your mouth is to quit eating carbohydrates. By far, stop the ultra processed foods, all this man-made food. Definitely don't drink it. That's the first thing people can do. And I know most of you probably know people who have gone out there and they said, man, I lost 20 pounds and all I did was quit drinking prop. Exactly. Does that tell you anything? Because pop is nothing but sugar. Gatorade is nothing but sugar. Um, fruit juices are nothing but sugar. They try to say, oh, drink all the orange juice and apple juice you need because it's it's healthy because it's a fruit. It's a lie. It is not a fruit juice. It is sugar that has a little bit of chemical taste to taste like fruit juice. Don't fall for it. Stick with the stuff you know. Drink water. Drink unsweet coffee, unsweet tea. Eat meat and eat fat. That's, what, that's the way you're going to um, get this because the only way you're going to lose fat by doing the low fat and the extra or the decreased calories and exercise more, like I said, is sheer grit and determination. And there's no reason you have to put yourself through that. 
it's fine for those movie stars who are getting paid mega bucks, you know, to be had their movie. If they want to suffer through that, they can, but you don't need to. There's no reason to. All you have to do is eat healthy. So of the three ways, just to make sure you understand what I said, the three ways are there's the calorie model, which is eat less calories approach. That only works about 5% of the time. And those people have a real true grit, a reason to lose the weight for a, for a competition or for a movie. Okay. So that's why that only works about 5% of the time. Then there's the medical system way. Take a drug that works 0% of the time and actually makes it worse. So that's the worst thing you could do. And then there's the insulin model. This is diabetes is a nutrition disease. It was caused by what you eat. It can be cured by what you eat. But obviously, what caused it and what cures it is going to be totally opposite things. What caused it was all your carbohydrate intake. What cures it is going to be your protein and your fat intake. It really is. It really is that simple. It just may not be that easy for you. So as long as you know that that's your ultimate goal, your ultimate goal is to eat all your meals with a good, healthy animal meat, good, healthy animal fat. If you want a, a real fruit or real vegetable mixed in there, go ahead. You can have those every now and then, but just make sure to eat it whole. So you get all the fiber, don't drink it. And then, um, and then eventually as you switch over from being a carbohydrate burner to being a, a fat burner, now you're going to be able to go a lot longer without eating because you're not going to be hungry. And this is when you can start doing the fasting. And that's when you're really going to be able to kick in not only your weight loss, but also reversing diabetes, getting off all of your diabetes medications, getting off all your blood pressure medications, getting off all kinds of medications that are caused by the same nutritional problem. So I hope I wasn't too much in your face. I, just, I, I, I honestly do get very, very irritated knowing that the solution to this, and it's so hard to get this through to people, is all we're saying is go back to eat the stuff that we've been eating since the very beginning of time. Once our dietary guidelines came out in 77, telling everybody that eating fat was what was causing you fat to be fat, that's when all our disease states started going up, our obesity rates, our type 2 diabetes rates, our blood pressure, Alzheimer's, cancer, polycystic ovarian syndrome. I mean, all the things started really, really increasing a lot in the, in the 70s and 80s is when these happened. And that's when we started telling everybody how to eat. So just like I said earlier, Human beings are the only animal on the entire planet that has to be told what to eat. Every other animal can do it on their own. They know what they eat. We were also the same way up until our dietary guideline came out. Once man started telling us what was healthy to eat because they were making lots of money for their shareholders, that's when everything started, started going way downhill. So it's not their fault because they're in it for the money. They need the money and they need the shareholders. And so it's a business. All you have to do is don't buy their products. And if you don't buy their food, then you're not going to have to buy their drugs either. So that's, that's, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. And I hope I didn't if anybody, but if I did, you know, you might want to think about it again. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I've got for today. Um, as always, thank you so much for listening. Have a fantastic week. And as always, remember, make simple, healthy choices to live a quality life.